I'm Dan O'Hara. This is the Sports Express Network. From Pop Warner to the Dome, from 5Ks to marathons, from Little League to Work Leagues, focusing on the community sports lifestyle in Central New York. Oh, do it. Do it to it. Go on and do it. Hi, I'm Dan O'Hara. Rob Bennett is on location in Cooperstown doing a little uh, Little League baseball. Uh, not much to report on the Auburn Pride. They had the week off. Uh, this Saturday, the 27th, they play Carthage at home, game time, 7 p.m. But we have a special guest in the studio today, Leroy Collins. How you guys uh, doing? Great story with, with Leroy. Leroy's a friend of Auburn. He comes, helps out with the Auburn Pop Warner. Uh, he did a big, we did a big coaching clinic, which we, you were a big part of. Uh, he helps out the Auburn Pride uh, quite a bit. I uh, was involved in the Syracuse minor league football team with him. Uh, what was that, three years ago now when it yep. started? So... Um, for those of you don't, that don't know, um, Leroy Collins has an amazing story. Um, probably five years ago, I approached Leroy and said, hey, uh, can you come talk to, at a Pop Warner banquet? And uh, he basically asked me what he should talk about. And it was pretty simple, talk about your, your life story. So we'll get into it. Um, you've got a book coming out. It's, it's coming out the first. It's coming out in August. In August, it should be released. You should have, uh, we have... Uh, uh, ways, uh, th many ways you can purchase the book, uh, many local stores um, and online. Uh, we'll, we'll post everything and have a, also a website you can actually buy the book from as well. So it's coming out the first, it's called? The Running Back. It's called The Running Back. From the, uh, from the wheelchair to the NFL. So right now you can order it on Amazon, is that correct? Um, no, you can't purchase it right now, um, but um, it's, it's actually live, but you can't purchase it right now. Um, so you will, once, once you see the postings out, see the cover, uh, you better post it. Be so Auburn, it. hang tight. Uh, we're going to hook up a book signing so you can meet and, and greet Leroy in the, in the future. Um, after the book comes out, uh, we got some things that we're going to do with the community with that. Um, selfishness. Let's talk about that first. Um, I've asked a lot of you, even when we really didn't know each other, and you never said no. You came and did it. So, you know, publicly I want to say thank you very much for being involved in the community with Pop Warner. And you know, with young adults in the in the semi-pro world, so let's talk about this this amazing story. So, here you are. What were you? Ten years old? Six years old. Six years old. Mm -hmm. You're out playing cowboys and Indians with your brother. Yeah. And you got hit by a ten-wheel truck. Hit by a truck. Yes. And you were dragged two blocks. A, yeah, a block. A block. Mm -hmm. Pronounced dead. How many times? Three times. Three times. So. Here we have a six-year-old boy gets hit by a truck. Um, the story that you you told about your dad and and his run to where you were. Talk about that a little bit. Uh, well, yeah, he was a. Uh, my father was a uh, at the time was a, a volunteer fire a firefighter, and um, he heard about the news. He wasn't there at, at the scene, but he heard about the news um, through somebody a, a family friend. And so he took off to the hospital um, and ran, ran, ran through the town to get to the hospital to find out exactly is it true what he, what he said. So they, so they said it, he dropped everything and took off running um, to the hospital. But let, let's jump, jump forward. Um, you weren't supposed to ever literally walk, talk again. Um, so when did you fall in love with the game of football? Can we, can we go there? Yeah, let's, yeah, let's talk about that. Well, this is a great story. He yeah. told this at the Pop Warner banquet, and this is a disclaimer. Pop Warner does not condone anything that Leroy's about to say <laughs> about this issue, but go yeah. ahead. Yeah, so I basically fell in love with the game of football. Um, I was sitting at, at, at my house my, my, with my, my brothers and sisters. It was, I was watching TV, and I was watching this football game, my first time watching football, first time ever seeing football. And so I'm watching this game. I'm like, I'm, I'm, I'm amazed by it. I'm, I'm, I fell in love with it. I, I wanted to do what they were doing. But the only problem was I was in a wheelchair. You know what I mean? I was unable to walk. At least that's what a doctor had said. I was, I, I never be able to walk again. So, but when I saw the game, I was in a wheelchair. So, uh, but I still had a passion to play this game. I said, uh, you know, I want to, I want to learn how to walk because I want to play football. And then so as I started, you know, rehabilitating myself and you know, with, with physical therapy and and a little bit of, uh, of my own, uh, I was able to take my steps. 
take my first steps, second step, third step, you know what I mean? Then I'm now you know what I'm saying I'm taking full steps, I'm walking. Uh, I wasn't walking like normal kids, like all the normal kids in the neighborhood, um, but I was taking steps forward. And so I felt that I was not just taking steps to walk. I was getting closer to the NFL, you know what I mean? Because that was my dream. That's why I started working extra hard and started doing the extra things to get there. And, um, and saying, so Pop Warner come around, a couple months later, Pop Warner come around and of course, I'm one, I want to play Pop Warner. Of course, your mom, mom signed you up, right? And then so as soon as I tell my mother <laughs> about the Pop Warner sign-ups, she said, are you crazy? Get out of here. You're not playing no football. You know, it's not happening. You're not playing football. So um, she, got, she, she got that. She turned down that decline, that, that idea of me playing football. So uh, I went and talked to my, I went and, uh, you know, talked to my uncle and asked him if, um, if he uh, don't mind signing his paper for me if I can play football. So what we did, we forged my mother's name, and I was on a football team for a couple of weeks until she found out a second time, found out, found out, and then took me off the team. Well, where did you put your equipment when you came home from practice? <laughs> I, had a, I had our equipment in the back stairway. I, I left in the back stairway um, of, a, of the apartment we lived in. We lived in, a, it's called the Bliss Towers. So it was a, black stair, a back stairway where nobody ever walked. I mean, so it was always safe there, so... Uh, I kept my I kept my shoulder pads and helmets and stuff there, and you know I got friend I got ride home with you know friends, um, with my uncle you know what I mean different people brought me home at night brought me to the practice and to and home at night so and mom had no idea she had no idea my mother was a very hard working woman and um and and she she trusted my my, my her her brother you know what I'm saying so if I'm with big him, mistake if I'm with Huge him mistake. if I'm with him everything's okay. <laughs> So mainly I was with him or I was with my other uncles or with my cousins or I was always someplace other than football practice. So when mama found out. When she found out, <laughs> she decided to say, she tried to come in and chew everybody else, chew everybody out and took me off the team. And it was the worst day of my life that I thought at that time. It was like, you can't do this to me because I have a dream. I have a vision that I'm trying to reach and I, and I need to be here to do that. But you had a good coach that saw your potential. And went and talked to your mom, correct? Yeah. So I was off the team for a couple of days, and then until the coach, I asked the coach to, and you know, I talked to my uncle to talk to the coach if he can talk to my mother for me, if I can play. And saying so, the coach is like basically say, you know, we're gonna we'll let him. Uh, if you can let him play, we'll protect him. We we'll keep, you know, we'll keep him safe, and we won't we won't get him hurt. Um, if you can let him play. He's not gonna play that much. If you can let him play on the team, um, that would be. Awesome. So she did, she agreed with him and said, "Well, keep my baby safe and um and I and I let him play." And, so, and I was on the team. So the title of the book is the running back. Right. So it's from the will, you, will running back from the wheelchair to the NFL. Right. But Pop Warner, you weren't playing running back until that one day. Right. Yep. So and all of a sudden the lights came on and here's this kid taking off down the field. Yep. So the um. My first year playing, uh, they put me at lineman. I was always a lineman. And I was the smallest, almost the smallest, I think one of the smallest guys on the field with walking with a, with a limp. And uh, they put me at always a lineman. So uh, I figured that was the place they want to put me for. I would probably stay safe, or, I'm saying not get hurt, or whatever the case may be. So, you know, nobody really ever knew how fast I was, how athletic I was, even though I walked with a limp. And I was, you know, I died a couple of years back and a couple of years before, and I had broken bone, broke all my all the bones in my body. Even though, uh, you know, nobody, I mean, I was the smallest guy on the team. They put me in lineman, so nobody ever got a chance to see me run. They never got a chance to see me, the the move and none of this other stuff. So, uh, one day when they got a chance to see it, a guy fumbled the ball. I went and picked the ball up. I chased the guy down and caught him right before, at a one yard line, and then it turned the light on. And everybody's like, this kid right here is fast. He's one of the fastest on our team. And so that's when things change. And then they start moving positions that allow me to handle the ball and score touchdowns. So athletically, you were on your way. I was on my way. So you get through Pop Warner. You start to get into high school. Athletically, you, you had all the tools. Academically, because of the accident, there were some setbacks, correct? Right. Yeah. So I struggled in school. I struggled. Um, all my all all my life in I mean school up to ninth grade I had I didn't I didn't know 
that I didn't know that I had, had a learned disability, had troubles reading, um, writing, I just things I didn't know. You know, I was in special ed classes um, for most of my high school, mo most of my um, high, um, school career uh, until I, you know, wanted to change. I wanted a difference. And so once I got a, figured it out, I got a chance to, um, to talk to some people and, you know, and they, they got some guidance, got some help, got some tutoring, and, and I was able to break through that, you know, that, you know, learning, learning barrier, some, learning barrier, you know what I'm saying, the struggles I was right. having in school, and, you know what I mean, so I wasn't, I wasn't bringing home F's anymore, or, you know, even D's, I was bringing home decent grades now. Back then, the medical, you know, advice that they were giving you wasn't really known of the extent of the accident, correct? Am I right. saying that? So, so the, the learning disability was a hurdle for you, but yet, w once you found out that was the issue, you worked twice as hard and got to where you're going. Oh. So, you know, that's a great, you know, great learning tool for other people that are struggling too. Yeah. Um, so let's fast forward, you get into high school, mm -hmm. magic is happening, right? You've magic got your ever. grades under, under control, you, you understand where you've got to go, you're getting extra help, you're staying after school, you're doing all the necessary things that you need to do. So what's next after high school? Um, high school now, um, like I just, I've graduated, got my diploma, and I was, now it's time to choose a college. I missed my opportunity for Division One schools because, you know, because of the grades and because of the other things that's, that's required that you need to do as far as to get a Division One scholarship. Um, so I had to go to junior college. So um, I saw out some junior colleges and I found one college I went to, Dean Junior College. I went there and, um, you know, a lot of things that happened out, happened the way we wanted it to. So um, a year after that, I ended up going traveling to um, Alfred State. And then, uh, you know, then like you said, magic happened. Magic happened. Who come calling? Louisville. Then Louisville. I got. I mean, I got. A, I got. A, I had every like every school, like a lot of Division One schools. You know, um, Michigan, um, Syracuse, um, you know, Utah. Utah State was the one before Louisville. Utah State was the was the original school. They went to Buffalo, uh, Florida. You know, so Boston College. So you name know, all these schools were. Were, con were, were contact me, and the reason why I chose, uh, I was tr actually chose Utah State, um, but Utah State ended up becoming, the reason why I chose them, because they really wanted me running back. Everybody else wanted to move my position to something else. And um, it was kind of funny to me, because I was running back. And uh, and that's mainly a lot, probably a lot where the name came from as well. Um, but uh, once they, w once uh, Utah State said, we love you as a running back, we want, we want you here, we want you there, and uh, and I saw so I was gonna choose them. I chose I chose them, and then they ended up leaving, going to Louisville. And then at the same time of me signing signing with them, um, I ended up, Louisville ended up calling me saying, "Yo, we're here now, so you come with us now." See, I always do my homework, and this I knew this like years ago when I looked at it, and I, and I just pulled it up. And <clears throat> you went to Louisville for one year, right? One year, one season. If you look up, I think it's the uh, all-time stats for Louisville. You went there one year and still your sixth all-time leading rusher in one year. Yeah. Which is impressive. So in 1998, you ended up with 218 attempts, 1,134 yards. You averaged 5.2 yards a carry, 19 touchdowns. Oh, by the way, you caught 35 passes for 326 yards. You averaged 9.3 yards a carry, 1,460 all-purpose yards with an average of 5.8. Mm-hmm. Wow. Wow, in, in one year, in one season, yep. It was like, it was, and I didn't, I didn't really start, really start until the third game of the season. I was a backup. On Eleven games that you played in. That's incredible. Yep. That that just, I I look at the 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 carries, the yards, the average, almost unheard of. I mean, the next guy that even comes closest is, is three hundred and seven yards in that year. Um, the next closest guy was. Arnold Jackson with 1198, but that was pretty much receiving yards. And Chris Redman was your quarterback. Quarterback, yes. So, pretty impressive. Why did you make yourself eligible for the draft in 98? 
Well, there's a lot of there's a lot of different reasons why. Um, it's, it's definitely in the book that you're gonna, you're gonna okay. say. Okay. Okay. Definitely in the book you're gonna find out. Um, but there's a lot of re there's a lot of reasons that I, uh, a lot of reasons why I could have went back for another year. Um, I was actually a senior in classes and you know junior in the football fields and you know and teams were calling, so teams were calling so it kind of made and my and rewind back a couple years or rewind back I'm saying ten to twelve years uh, when I made that dream and vision I had that vision and dream for myself to make the NFL and then you know then I had that that calling I mean what what I dreamt and what I fought to you know to get. It was actually calling. It was there, and so you know, it, it made a. It was a, it was a sticky situation, but it was uh, I thought it was the right decision. You know, a lot of people that I meet that uh, you know move on to the NFL, and you know their careers are done, and you know they come back, and you meet these people, you're pretty much nothing like them, and I'm I'm saying that you know honestly, you know, these guys that go in the NFL, some of them have a chip on their shoulder. Um, you ask them to do something, it's how much are you going to pay me. You've never said that. You've never done that. Um, you've done numerous things for me, um, for, for the community and Pop Warner and, and the semi-pro. And by the way, I have a helmet and shoulder pads that will probably fit you if you want to suit up Saturday night. Let me know. I'm in. I'm in. I'll play. <laughs> yeah, I, got, I got another get game. Get us some there, of that uh, 5.2 yards of carry. Yeah. But uh, so... I guess the moral of the story is, well, first of all, don't lie to your mother, right? right. Can't do right. that. Yeah, no. But the journey, I can't wait till the book comes out. I can't wait to read the book, um, learn a little bit more about you, um, your situation, what you went through. And you found yourself now that public speaking is therapeutic for you, right? It is. It, 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 it helps me to know that I'm helping somebody else. You know, and we all got, we, the thing is that we all have different paths that we, that we go, but we all face the same adversities, the same challenges. And, and sometimes some people get lost and get stuck and don't know how to get out of whatever, whatever hole they're in, whatever, whatever um, you know, situation, wall they're stuck in between. Um, so listen to certain things I know help me out. So I know me giving that to other people, it's, it's, a, it's a joy for me to know that that those words touch them in a way that's going to help empower them and help them to reach, go further into their, to their goal. And the way you tell that story is I remember the, the Pop Warner banquet. You know, I didn't know what to expect. I, I didn't really know you that well then. Um, but, man, once you, once you got that microphone, that was impressive. Yeah. There was a couple tears in the audience, and you got a standing ovation. So if somebody wants you to come and do some you know, speaking, or how do they get a hold of you? Um, they can call. They can, um, you know, there. There's a uh, my e um, NFL alumni emails Leroy Leroy dot Cotlins at NFL alumni dot org. Um, the company website is um, info at um, DC three consulting dot com. Okay. So info at DC three. That's the best way to probably reach me. Info at DC three consulting dot com or Leroy Collins Leroy dot Collins at NFLalumni.org. So let's talk about that, that a lot of people in this area don't know. You are the president of the NFL alumni chapter in this area, correct? Right. Mm -hmm. So you do a lot of things with charities. You uh, um, have events, and, and, and people can contact you and say, I want to have an NFL event to raise money for this charity. And mm -hmm. you sit down with the board of directors, and you discuss it if it's a, if it's the right move to make for the NFL alumni, and then you guys go forward, right? right. Mm -hmm. So there's another avenue that that Leroy uh, shows his, you know, selfishness. He he he's president of the NFL alumni, and he, he does all this charity work. Um, your wife is awesome. She's a great cook. Mm -hmm. You got yeah. some kids. One of them's here today. He's he's checking it all out, smiling. Yeah. And uh, you know, how's how's family life? How's life? After football, yeah, everything's good, man. You know, we we always we try to build, and um, and like you said, my passion is to if I can give back as much as I can, as I, that's a passion of mine, and um, uh, you know, I try to uh, show these my boys the, the you know, the path of being um, just being good stewards, and you know, and and, and care about people, and a lot of things that you do, you know, you, you do things, you set you set yourself up to help another person out, you know, I mean, you don't. Um, we try to talk about selfishness and, you know, and, and just being hard workers. 
You know what I mean? Being um, consistent, you know, so with certain things. And and if I can give them that, um, that'll be, that's, that, that's, a, that's a joy. That'd be a joy to me if I give them that. And I think it's, we're doing it. Like what do you wife. think? Good dad? Come here. Come out over here. <laughs> The lights are on you. What's your name? Donovan Collins. How old are you? 11. How's your dad? Good dad? Yeah. Anything you want to say? Is he mean <laughs> at home? No. No? He's all right? I just want to say he's a really good dad. Yeah. I'm glad he's part of my family. Really helped me to overcome some of my fears. And he trains me every day, almost every day. To be the best dad I can be, so I just want to say thanks. I, I want to hug him. Hug the yep. kid up, man. Give uh, him a hug. I, I give him a hug. He, he don't need a hug, man. He need a he need a, he need to um, go run a lap, do a couple push ups. So, <laughs> wow, nah, NFL good. dad. This book's coming out. Good comes day. out in August. Um, you know, look at Sports Express. We're probably going to do a, a thing here uh, with Leroy to do a book signing, greet and meet. Hopefully at one of the uh, home pride games. Um, mm -hmm. Uh, you know, have you there talking to people and, and, and sharing your story. I think it's a great story. Glad to have you here. And uh, nice to meet you, man. Nice. What's your dream? Uh, Soccer? Basketball? Basketball. Ba oh, <laughs> changing the tide. I yeah. like it. All right. All right. I think you're going to be tall as your dad. So yeah, he that'll might, work. He might be. Taller? Might you be taller. Look, look down at him? Yeah. <laughs> Hey, Leroy Collins, look for his book in August. Hey, that's all we got. This is the Sports Express Network. Thank you very much. Thank you.